Hey, Trail Kreitzer at Go Hunt. Uh, today I have a uh, gear dump for you. Um, this is a little bit different for me. This is kind of a mid to late season uh, gear dump um, pack list. Uh, I've already been out on an archery hunt. Neville and I uh, just got back from Colorado. Neville was successful in killing a bull. Um, I ate that tag, which man doesn't sit well with me. So I'm getting ready to go out and, and take some revenge out uh, middle and late season this year. Uh, Actually, this next hunt that I'm going on and I'm going to kind of show you my gear list for today is actually for a tag that my 15 year old boy has. Uh, my 15 year old Landon has his first, um, you know, branch antler bull elk tag coming up uh, in Colorado. I think he drew that with three or four points. Uh, he's super excited about it. So I kind of want to run through the gear list uh, that I'm going to pack and, you know, he and I are both going to use. Uh, and then I also have a late season archery elk tag in Arizona. Um, Relatively easy tag to draw. Uh, a lot of the same equipment's gonna translate to that late season hunt down there. Uh, I may not have the temperatures that are quite as cold that I could face this next week. It looks like it might have a cold front moving into Colorado. Uh, but a lot of this stuff is gonna be very similar, um, you know, minus the rifle, and I'll change that out for my brand new Matthews bow, um, which I can't wait to uh, show you all at a later date. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna get started and just kind of jump in, uh, working from right to left uh, to this end of the table and just kind of work you through my gear list. Uh, we are going to backpack hunt. There's a bunch of wilderness in this country. Uh, I hope that my kid you know, doesn't whine and complain too much because he's probably gonna end up packing elk quite a ways. Um, and I've been warning him and saying, hey, I hope you're, you're feeling in shape, buddy, because it's coming. So uh i'm just gonna jump in and start uh this end of the table and work this way um first i'm gonna touch on my sleeping bag uh this green sleeping bag here has been a staple for me the last few years um i've had it for a while uh this is the western mountaineering versalite sleeping bag uh 10 degree bag um long version just weighs uh over two pounds so my son is actually going to use the western mountaineering alpine light which i have one of those that's a 20 degree bag uh, one pound 15 ounces uh, for the regular version. So I've had that bag, I've got this bag, those two are gonna be the ones that we're gonna take. As far as shelter goes, uh, I'm gonna end up using a Seek Outside Eolus. Uh, this is the Dyneema version of this. Uh, super lightweight. I uh, took this to Colorado, uh, hunting elk with Neville a couple weeks ago, um, archery. This thing is money, sets up super quick, uh, tons of room for one person, uh, for two people. You have two entrances on either side, uh, which is nice. You've got your own spot for your own gear. Uh, this is a floorless shelter, um, which is nice. We're gonna end up using a bivy on the inside of that. Um, the bivy I'm gonna use is a uh, Hilleberg Bavana rack. And man, I'm a big fan of the Bavana rack. This thing is so handy. Um, 21 ounces on that Bavana rack. You can literally blow up your sleeping pad, throw your sleeping bag in that. Uh, super quick to set up. Um, I slept really good the last couple nights in Colorado in this thing. Uh, it's got sleeves, which is great. You can also use it as rain gear. So if you get yourself in a pinch and you get into a downpour, either snow showers or rain showers, you can throw that thing over uh, your body and also your pack, which is great. Tons of coverage in that. Uh, one of the things I really like about this Bavana rack is that you can open up the foot portion of that. So it's got a drawstring closer at the bottom. Uh, what I like about that is it actually breathes pretty well, so you don't get the condensation built up in the end of that that you might in something like an outdoor research uh, helium, for example. If any of you tried that, sometimes you get a little bit of condensation. Uh, I love this Bavana rack. This is probably going to be a staple for me in my backpack for a long time to come. Um, <clears throat> I might look like a Dementor from Harry Potter when I wear the thing, but I can tell you that this is one of my favorite pieces of new gear that I picked up. Sleeping pad. Uh, this one is also a staple in my backpack. I've uh, used it for six or seven years at this point. This is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite uh, coming in at one pound. Uh, this is a long, so it's 77 inches long, 25 inches wide, so I get a little bit more shoulder coverage. Uh, one pound flat, which is a great little sleeping pad. Um, I like the durability of this pad. It's been really durable for me. Um, you know, I've always thought it was kind of noisy, so if you, you listen to that, uh, I sold Neville on one of them and he tried it out and he actually thinks it's one of the more quiet pads that we carry when he slept on it. So I think once you get this thing blown up, um, it's far less noisy than you might think. So um, seek out, not seek outside, Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. So that's our sleep system. Um, there is a chance if it gets really cold, I may end up taking a teepee tent. Uh, I have a seek outside Red Cliff that I've had for a bunch of years. Uh, I might take that in a titanium large stove 
It ultimately just depends on what that weather port looks like. Uh, right now it looks like highs in the mid 50s, to maybe low 60s, and then nighttime lows in the 20s. So I think we're gonna be just fine uh, with that Western Mountaineering sleeping bags, uh, the bivy, and then the Eolus. So I think sleep system, we're gonna try to go light and fast. We could go with the stove and the Red Cliff um, if it does drop down and get cold. So I'm gonna take those as well. Uh, a piece of gear that I wanna to touch on before I move on. Um, this is not going to go with us into the back country, but this is a um, but this is a jet boil half gin uh, stove system. Uh, I'm going to start packing this. I think just keep it in my truck. This is really handy for doing some truck camping. It's just a single burner that hooks up to a propane canister. Uh, you can actually link these together, so you could get two of them, link it together, and have like a full you know system. Um, this came in really handy on my antelope hunt. We were able to grill burgers. We did hot dogs. We did brats. Um, we did all kinds of stuff in this little half gen burner. So for car camping, uh, this is a piece of gear that we have in the gear shop that's super handy. Uh, I actually really like it. And I think you'd, uh, you'd do well to pick yourself up one for just car camping. So, you know, leaving on a hunt, um, you're doing some scouting, you're spending some time getting to know your unit. This is a great little piece of gear. Um, it's always good to come out, you know, share a you know, beverage with your buddy and uh, grill some brats and have a, you know, a good meal on your way out as well. So I did want to touch on that, and it is something I am going to end up packing uh, on this hunt. So I am going to pack a spotting scope. Uh, this is not uh, the premier unit in Colorado for elk, but I do think there's a chance for a nice bull. So I am going to pack a spotter just to be able to size up an animal. Uh, so for a spotting scope, I use the Swarovski uh, HD 20 by 60 by 65. Uh, I like the smaller size of that 65. It's a little bit lighter weight, but it still gives me that full 60 power, which I like. So you guys are probably familiar with uh, my spotting scope cover, which I've used for a long time, which is a wool sock. Uh, I have finally upgraded that. Uh, thanks to the guys over at Outdoor Vision. They were kind enough to hook me up with a new spotting scope cover, uh, which is this guy right here. Uh, fits like a glove. If you guys are looking for a new spotting scope cover for a Swarovski, uh, I would highly recommend that you check their uh, covers out. Um, works great. I really like that thing. It's not overly padded, uh, but it just definitely uh, provides the protection uh, for the body and the lenses of that scope to keep it clean. Uh, I have those on a tripod here. This is a Siri U 1204 XL tripod with a Vanguard PH21 head. Uh, it's just a simple tilt pan head. Um, the legs on that tripod they no longer make, but if you're looking for something comparable in the gear shop, uh, you might check out uh, the Siri U T024, also the Slick 634, the 635. Uh, those are kind of right in that same wheelhouse as far as weight and dimension. So if you're looking for a new set of tripod legs, check those out. Uh, I wish they made this one still. Uh, it's great height, super lightweight, uh, full package on that uh, set of legs and the head are gonna be right around three pounds. So perfect for backcountry hunting. Uh, so that's my kind of my optic setup. Uh, moving towards my binoculars. Um, I got a couple elk calls and I guess I'll touch on those real quick, sitting on my bino harness. Um, I carry these in my bino harness. Uh, I'm hoping that the bulls are still talking a little bit and I get a chance to get my kid to, to hear and get some interaction with some bull elk. Uh, my favorite call is this Phelps uh, Maverick, um, Dirk, that's my favorite. Um, I also like the Phelps Gray, so that one's uh, an easy one to use, I really like it, it works great. Uh, I'm committed to becoming a better elk caller, like just coming back from Colorado this last year, uh, I've always said I'm not a great caller and I didn't particularly use calls that much. Uh, Wholeheartedly, I'm admitting um, calling, being a better caller would have helped me. Uh, I'm committing this year, uh, 2021, I'm gonna become a better elk caller. So that's a, a commitment I'm gonna make to you. All right, so for a bugle, uh, I've just got a Rocky Mountain game call uh, bugle. Uh, typically, I'm not gonna do a lot of calling with the bugle. Mostly, I'm just gonna use that for a locator and hopefully I can get another bull to respond and we can move in on him uh, and get a chance with the rifle. So that's why I'm, I'm carrying that. Uh, optics wise for my binos, um, you can see I've got a bino harness here. This is the uh, Outdoor Vision um, Ridgeline Bino Harness with the Sightline uh, Rangefinder Pouch. Uh, inside that, I've got a pair of Leica Noctavids and a 10x42, which I'm using all the time. Uh, that's my go-to around my neck. Um, I think it's really tough to beat a pair of 10x42s around your neck for any Western big game hunting. Um, I really like this harness, does everything that I want it to. Um, I've got a, uh, a little bottle of wind checker here, which 
Might be the most important tool in elk hunting. Um, you, you can fool a lot of things on an elk. Um, you might get away with some noise. Uh, maybe even they can see you, but you'll never fool uh, an elk's nose. So I would always pack some Windicator. Uh, I like this little pouch here in the front. Uh, one thing in Colorado that you might be aware of uh, is that you've always got to carry your hunter uh, education card. So I always keep that there in the front of my bino harness. Uh, you're going to need that to buy tags. You're going to need that with you in the field when you're hunting. So keep that in mind. Uh, range finder, I've got a Leica. Uh, mine's an old one. I've had this for a bunch of years. It's a Leica 16 or 1000R actually. Um, mine's pretty old, I've had it for a while. Uh, if you're looking for something comparable in the gear shop, uh, and if you're looking to update your rangefinder, uh, I would check out the Leica 2400. Um, for a rifle hunt, um, they've got a bunch of different rangefinders in the shop. Um, another new one that we have there, that new Leupold uh, full draw rangefinder with the calculations built into that for the angles is a sweet little rangefinder. And it still goes up to, what, 900 yards I think on a deer, so that should be ample for most, although we're starting to stretch that for, for Western big game hunting. Um, so that's it for my optics. Um, I guess one more piece that I do have that I would touch on is uh, little, my little binocular tripod adapter, uh, which is a Leica Stabilite, uh, just under five ounces, so not too much weight. Uh, I have that with me all the time. It's tough to beat a, uh, a pair of binoculars mounted on a tripod for Western big game hunting. Whether you're talking late season elk, you know, mid or late season mule deer, there's probably not a better tool than a pair of good binoculars on a tripod. So that little Leica Stabilite plate, I've been using for it about 15 years. So uh, it's been my go-to and I really, really like that little thing. Um, I do have one more little piece here that I would touch on before. Um, this is a Triclops. So this is a little rifle rest. Uh, we carry these in the gear shop. Um, it may not be that important for you know a lot of guys if you put a lot of rounds, but for a brand new hunter uh, like my kid who's 15, this thing is just absolutely awesome. You can just simply uh, put in a base plate on the bottom of that thing. It pops into the head of your tripod and then you have all the ability to move that with your tripod head. You can just simply tighten that thing down on the stock of the rifle uh, and you've got a lot of movement, you know, back and forth with your tripod, but that makes a really stable platform, especially for a kid or somebody that's new to hunting. This is a really nice little tool and it's something that he enjoys shooting off of. He feels more confident. Um, you know, I feel good about it. I think ultimately you get a, a really nice rest uh, with that little triclop. So check those out. We do have those in the gear shop. So that's a great tool. Uh, moving over into some of my camping equipment and gear. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on is water. So late season water. Uh, I typically don't use a water bladder. Um, and why that is is because they're prone to freezing. So the hoses, right? If it gets cold at night, uh, you can freeze those up. And a lot of times if it doesn't warm up during the day, uh, they can be really tough to get water. So I do carry uh, hard sided Nalgene bottles. You can get these Go Hunt Nalgene bottles in our store. Um, typically at night, I will stick those like at the base of my sleeping bag, somewhere close to me where I'm gonna, you know, my body heat's gonna keep those things to thawed. Um, you get frozen water, it can be a real pain late season and you still need to stay hydrated. Um, even though, you know, you're probably not burning um, off as much sweat as you might early season when it's hot, you definitely do need to stay hydrated and I like these little Go Hunt Nalgene bottles uh, and I will be using those. Um, I've got a, a few filters here actually. I brought a kind of a few of them. This little Sawyer uh, squeeze filter, um, great when it's not too cold, but when you get this thing real cold, it can freeze and it's real tough or impossible to flush water through. So it depends on how cold it's gonna be. Uh, I may or may not take that. Uh, in those cases, I would suggest a couple other things. Um, a Katadyne Hiker Pro, which I have here is great because you can pump water. So it's got a simple pump that I've used uh, a bunch of times. That's a great water filter. Uh, another one that I would use or I would suggest uh, is this little roving blue pen. So if you've got good flowing water, uh, this uses ozone and you're simply gonna pop the lid off. You're gonna activate it by hitting the button on top. This is rechargeable via micro USB. You're just gonna give it a little stir inside your water source and it's gonna purify that water uh, with ozone. So this is a nice little lightweight option for treating water uh, even if it's cold. Uh, I will pack this thing and I really like this little filter, excuse me, this little purifier. Uh, I also sometimes pack water tabs, so the aqua tabs from like MSR or even the small aqua mira drops are another nice solution for treating water. 
Uh, it gets a little bit more difficult when you get late season with water. So just, you know, make sure you're taking stuff that's gonna work. I can tell you from personal experience, if this thing freezes up, it won't work. So don't plan on that if it gets too cold. I'm gonna jump in and talk about my stove setup. Uh, I'm a pretty simple guy when it comes to a lot of things. My stove is no exception. Uh, this is a Soto Windmaster. So this is the same little stove I've used for a bunch of years. Uh, it's a simple screw-on stove. You're simply going to uh, screw that on top of an isobutane canister. Uh, this is the big size here, so you can see, uh, what do I got here, almost nine ounces, I think, uh, eight ounces. So this should be enough for a five-day hunt for me and my kid, uh, boiling two things of water every night, once a day. Uh, if you're going solo, you could probably get away with the four-ounce canisters and probably get, I would say, five to six days. Um, this last hunt that I went on, I think I got six days out of my little uh, four ounce um, isobutane. And again, it depends on how much you're using it. If you're a guy that's drinking coffee every morning, you're gonna need to end up picking more of these up, you know, packing more of these uh, if, you're, if you're boiling water more often, but this should be fine for he and I. Um, for a spork, spork, do you like how I said that? Uh, <laughs> For a spork, I'm using a, uh, it's a little MSR pop-out uh, spork. Man, no frills, that thing folds up, uh, fits nicely here in uh, my pot, which I cook with. Uh, this is just an ever new titanium pasta pot. It's gonna be fine for me. I'm gonna have to boil water twice uh, for me and my kid, which is fine, not a big deal. So that's my cook system. Uh, just a simple ever new pot, Windmaster uh, Soto stove and a spork. Uh, moving over into some of my other gear, uh, I will pack a couple of trekking poles. In fact, I'll end up using those a lot, I'm sure. Uh, this is a set of Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Cork trekking poles. Um, you may have heard me state before the reason I have two different colors or two different options here is because uh, I'm prone to sticking one in the ground when the action picks up and then walking off and leaving it. Uh, I have one in the, the wilds or the wilderness of New Mexico and then one on Kodiak Island, uh, but I do have one pair left over. So that's my trekking poles, uh, Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Cork, and I will use those both when I'm hiking and then also to set up my uh, Seek Outside Eolus, which pitches ever so nicely with a set of trekking poles. Um, for knives, uh, I've got a few knives here that I'm going to show you. So this is a uh, Taito Fanon 3 knife. This is a great little knife. Um, man, I love this little knife. It's been awesome for me. Um, I've used it this year. It's been great. I do like to carry a fixed blade knife as well as a replaceable blade knife, which I'll touch on here in a minute. Uh, my kid, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited that he's going to get a chance to break down an animal. Um, he killed a cow elk this last year and he was just super eager to jump in and do a lot of the work himself. Uh, this is the knife I'm probably going to let him use. Uh, I'm not fully confident in giving him one of these razor sharp scalpel uh, replaceable blade knives. I actually like this one better for him doing a lot of the skinning, so he's going to end up using that. Uh, another knife that I carry, uh, this is a new knife to me this year. This is the uh, Goat uh, Capra Titanium. It's got a couple of bits here that you can see that fit inside the handle. Uh, it's a replaceable blade, so you can put a number 60 or number 60A uh, replaceable blade on that thing. Um, I love these little bits that fit here in the actual handle itself. You can see you've got a spot here that you can fit those in. So when you get this knife, it's going to come with a uh, set of bits and you can kind of pick and choose the uh, size that fit to the components or something that you might you know, need to work on in the field. Uh, so for like a loose scope ring, you know, it's great to have a bit for your scope rings. It's going to fit in that. Uh, I've actually been on a hunt with a gentleman that had his scope rings come loose. Uh, it's not a fun thing when you're scrambling trying to find Allen wrenches to get your scope tied down and then recite that thing back in. So that's a really cool little feature of this Goat Titanium uh, Capra knife. Um, I also like the way this thing feels in my hands. So it's got a couple of rubber bands that run the length of the handle. Just kind of gives it some dexterity. Uh, I actually really like that little knife. So once again, that's the uh, Goat Capra Titanium. Uh, this is the Goat Tar um, Carbon Fixed Blade Knife. I actually just picked this up, what, a day or two ago? Uh, I got it in the mail. Um, Travis Nowatney was nice enough to send this over to me and I'm super excited to put this thing to use. Uh, that thing is so sharp and so light uh, and I love the shape of that thing. So for skinning, uh, pulling out back straps, tenderloins, uh, I'm super excited about this new knife from uh, Goat. Um, 
I've, I've been way excited about the stuff that those guys have been putting out. Uh, this knife is no exception. Uh, I hope to get to use it on a, on a big bull elk that my son kills. Uh, moving over into some of my other gear that I always have, uh, late season hunts, uh, these little hot hands. You can pick these up at any Walmart. Uh, I always have some of these uh, in my pack just in case you get in an emergency situation, you really need to warm up your hands or your feet. These come in handy. You're probably familiar with them. You just shake them up um, and they activate those and those will stay hot. You can put them inside your gloves or inside your boots, but those things work wonders. Uh, I got a little knife sharpener. I should have mentioned that. This is a work sharp filled sharpener. So it's got two sides. You have a ceramic top here and you also have a rougher uh, edge here on the bottom. You can use that to kind of fine tune your blade. Um, those come in really handy and they don't weigh that much. So I would suggest picking up one of those. Uh, one thing about these little filled sharpeners I should note is they've got the built in angles with them. So as you see that here, it's got the predetermined angle. So you don't have to worry about getting the right angle on your blade. Um, so that's handy. Uh, rope, I always carry some quarter rope. Uh, this is Z-Pax Slick Line. Uh, I've probably got maybe 50, 100 feet in there. Um, this line is really slick, so it actually slides. So if you're hanging quarters over a tree, um, it slides over and it won't bind like a uh, traditional paracord will or break. It's also super strong. Tent stakes, I should have touched that on uh, with my shelter. Uh, I carry uh, eight tent stakes that I'm going to use to help set up my uh, Eolus. Um, these are MSR needle stakes. I don't know that they make those anymore. Uh, as you move later into the season and the ground gets harder and more frozen and cold, uh, you might need to try some different stakes that are a little bit more beefy. Uh, something like the J stakes, uh, either from Sierra Designs. Uh, Hilleberg also makes a, a J stake. Uh, it's just a simple two-sided aluminum uh, DAC stake. Um, I really like those. Uh, these are probably what I'm going to end up taking just because I don't think it's going to be so cold that I'll have to worry about frozen ground. Uh, but these work great. Uh, they're super lightweight. Um, so like I said, I carry a set of eight of those. Those will go with my Seek Outside Eolus tent. Uh, communication. Uh, I still have this inReach uh, SE. This is the old school version. This is great for just keeping in touch with friends and family and loved ones. Uh, also has the SOS button. Uh, that thing goes with me all the time. Um, really like it and it works well. Uh, I still carry a GPS just for backup. Uh, my phone, I could show you my phone, but my phone is haggard and it's still, it's like on its last leg. So I'm still gonna pack a GPS. Uh, I have a land ownership chip in here, which is nice. Uh, I just use this to mark things that are really important, like the truck, uh, camp, um, you know, any type of thing that I would absolutely need to remember. I still use this little Garmin E-Trex 20X. Uh, it doesn't weigh that much. I think it's less than six ounces. So um, runs on a couple of double A's also, which is nice because you can replace those if you have to. Uh, I think probably at some point in the very near future, I'll end up completely ditching a GPS and just going with my phone. But man, I do like having the, um, you know, the peace of mind that I have from having a GPS. Uh, saw, so this is a um, Outdoor Edge Grizz Saw, uh, <laughs> high school cap bulls and bucks. Uh, I don't pack out full heads. I very rarely do Euro mounts. Uh, if it's big enough that we're gonna mount it, we'll cape it and we'll skull cap it, but we're gonna skull cap a bull uh, here in a week. So Grizzly uh, Outdoor Edge Saw. Uh, spotting scope. Um, Attachment, this is a scope cam made, made by the guys over at Tines Up. Uh, this is their universal amount. Uh, it screws onto the back of my phone. So I have a little attachment that goes on the, the back of my phone. Uh, you can just simply adjust this to any size of spotting scope, which is handy. It doesn't weigh that much and it's just fun to get some added footage through your spotting scope uh, of bucks or bulls. Um, you know, I even had the opportunity to film people, which is great because then you have a better reference of where somebody hit an animal. Um, you know, if my son ends up shooting off of, uh, you know, pack rest or, you know, the uh, bipod that we have on this gun, I'll try to film that shot through the spotting scope with my phone and this little uh, phone cam adapter. So that's a handy little adapter. It's my favorite. Uh, like I said, fits on any spotting scope. Uh, power, I have a couple of things that I carry for power. So this is a little uh, Goal Zero Flip 20. I can get maybe a charge and a half out of this Flip 20. Uh, works great, it's really lightweight. Um, I always pack that with me just in case I needed added power for either my messenger or my cell phone. 
Uh, I do often pack this Power Traveler uh, uh, solar panel. So it's a flip out, uh, simple, um, it's called the Falcon 7 solar charger. Uh, and I will use that during midday naps uh, to charge up my battery pack. So either charge up my battery pack or directly to my phone. Doesn't weigh a lot. Uh, and I do, again, I like the peace of mind just having a, a piece of gear that I can always get power from in case I need it. So that's a little Falcon 7 from uh, Power Traveler. Fire starter. Fire starters are important. You get in late season. Uh, do not scrimp on uh, fire starters. So these are these little uh, UST fires starting wet cubes or wet fire they're called. They're a little uh, tender cube. They don't weigh hardly anything at all and you can typically start a fire with just one of them. Um, you know, even half of them you can get a blaze going. Uh, I carry a couple of lighters and then I also carry 15 uh, weatherproof matches. Uh, and I take those with me all the time. Uh, if you are using a stove late season with a seek outside shelter, you know, don't scrimp on those little wet fire tender cubes. You know, take enough of them that you can get a fire going at least every day, you know, maybe a couple every day in case you need it in the morning and the evening. Um, they don't weigh that much, but you don't want to be cutting tags out of your clothes or burning a glove or a sock trying to get a fire going. So, you know, take enough tender to, to, to get it. Uh, activated and going. Uh, so this little backup packet uh, is some stuff I carry in my kill kit. It's just some added gear that I have uh, in case I need it. So I have extra batteries for a headlamp. Uh, so my headlamp here is a Black Diamond Storm headlamp. Uh, great little headlamp, waterproof, watertight, works great, replaceable batteries, which I like. Uh, I have a couple of AA batteries here for my GPS. I got a lighter. I also have this little Petzl E-Lite Plus, uh, which is a great little backup headlamp that weighs less than, what, an ounce. Um, I also keep uh, a bunch of extra blades in here for my replaceable blade, blade knife. So those are number 60 or 60A. Uh, sometimes I get asked, like, how many blades do you pack? Um, I would say typically for an elk, uh, if I've got three of those replaceable blades and I've got a fixed blade knife, it's more than enough to break down a bull. Um, so that's typically what I pack is three and a fixed blade um, for, for breaking down an elk. Uh, I also have a repair kit for my sleeping pad, so should I get a hole uh, in that pad, man, there's nothing worse than like getting a hole in your pad on the first night, right, Neville? Uh, so you do have to have a replaceable um, patch of some sort to fix your, your sleeping pad, should you have an issue with it. I have four of the Caribou Gear game bags. So I don't pack the Wapiti uh, game bags. I pack these uh, Carnivore 3 game bags, which is the smaller versions. Uh, typically I do that because I'm going to end up uh, boning out all the meat on a bull. So I'm going to bone out the front quarters, bone out the hind quarters, back straps, tenderloins, neck meat, um, you know, rib meat. I'm going to pull all that out and put it into these individual game bags. Often I can get it done in four. I may end up having uh, to have my kid pack a couple extras if we pack a cape um, or the head, something like that. Um, what we do, we don't pack the Wapiti, we pack those carnivore threes. They work for keeping all that meat uh, kind of contained in a more streamlined, narrow package that's gonna fit uh, along your pack better. Uh, when you get some of those big game bags, some of that meat can start to spill out, find the holes and the gaps uh, in your pack, and it can be awkward to carry. So I do like these game bags because of the shape. Uh, moving on to my medical kit. So you can see I've got a bag of stuff here. I've got some ibuprofen, I've got some, um, so you can see here, I've got uh, some ibuprofen. Um, I've got some like migraine medicine. So I, I do get some headaches sometimes. So this has got a little bit of caffeine in it. Uh, I have some, what was that a dog? Uh, I've got some cold medicine. So I have some nighttime and some daytime cold medicine in case somebody gets a little bit sick. Uh, I've got some clotting um, packets in here. I actually do have a suture kit. Uh, although I've never had to use that, and it would be really interesting if I did, but uh, I do have that in my, my, my pack just in case. Uh, I've got a bunch of bandages, um, you know, butterfly bandages and just regular band-aids. Uh, I do have some harder stuff in there just in case things went really south. Um, and that's my little medical kit. Um, I do have a little bit of uh, nighttime Tylenol PM as well, so if you have trouble sleeping at night, uh, and getting to sleep a little nighttime uh, Tylenol PM can help you get to sleep, which I, you got you got to sleep. A Sharpie with me. So I've got a Sharpie here for signing tags. Uh, also, if you had to leave a note, 
Uh, around the handle of that, I have some Luco tape, which is probably one of the most important things in my backpack, to be honest. Uh, I've used that to tape tags on. This stuff is money for blisters. If you've got a blister, a hot spot's starting to build. Uh, you just lay that over that hot spot before it turns into a blister, and that's going to save your feet. Uh, all kinds of use case scenarios for this Luco tape. This stuff is super sticky, sticks to anything, and it stays on for days and days on end. Um, can't buy it anywhere hardly. It seems like you have to buy it online, so look for that Luco tape online. Probably be a great thing for us to have in the Go Hunt gear shop. We'll look for that in the future, but you got to have a roll uh, of Luco tape. Toothbrush. You gotta have a travel toothbrush with a travel size thing of toothpaste. Wet wipes uh, or toilet paper. Uh, it's interesting the debate on where people lie, wet wipes or toilet paper. I think Neville's a toilet paper guy. I'm a wet wipe guy, so I only pack wet wipes. Uh, so that's kind of the gear uh, that I'm gonna end up carrying uh, on this elk hunt. And like I said, it's not gonna change a lot uh, onto my archery hunt. Typically the only thing that is gonna change is my weapon. As far as the gear side of things, that's pretty much what I'm going to end up packing for both uh, his hunt and then my late season archery hunt. So moving over into my clothing, uh, one of the pieces of equipment that I've been using this year that I've really liked are these Salewa Rapache boots. Uh, those are Gore-Tex full leather boots, uh, stiff soles, so we have them as uh, four flex on our flex scale for go hunt. Um, they're pretty stiff, rugged boot. Uh, I would say they're not so stiff that they're going to be a pain to break in. Um, they're still going to have a little bit of flex to them. They break in nicely. Uh, I just wore these, like I said, uh, Neville and I's hunt, and they were really, really good, especially when uh, Neville killed his bull. I ended up having to put mine and our cameraman's meat on my back. Remember that, Sam? Uh, I like the stiffness of this boot. It adds plenty of stability, so we ended up packing uh, Chris's bull out. It was probably about seven miles, to be honest, by the time we hit the truck. Uh, I think my pack load was probably pushing 80, 90, maybe even 100 pounds. It was pretty heavy. Uh, and these boots were great at giving me the stability and the support I need. Uh, and it was steep country, so um, this is a great boot. Salewa Rapache, I really, really like it. Uh, I'm gonna do another video today and talk about some late season boot options. So tune into that if you're looking for mid to late season boots. Uh, these are not insulated. Uh, my feet run hot. So if I'm wearing an insulated boot late season and I'm doing a lot of hiking, what ends up happening is my boots sweat out from the inside out and I have wet feet. So when I stop the glass, my feet are cold because they're wet. Uh, so I actually don't like an insulated boot. Uh, a lot of people do. It depends on your hunting style and also depends on how your feet run. Um, my feet run hot all the time. My feet sweat and flip flops. It just sucks, but it's the way it is. So. Not insulated, Salewa Rapache boots for me. Uh, moving on to socks, uh, I got a couple of pair of socks that I like. Uh, I typically only pack one pair of socks. Uh, it'll either be these. Uh, my kid's favorite sock actually is this Darn Tough 2012, which is a full cushion sock. Uh, this is actually his sock, so he'll be wearing these. Uh, I will probably be wearing these Farm to Feet Ely Hunt socks. You can see they're a little bit longer, they're a little bit thicker, so you get a little bit better, uh, more cushion through the forefoot. Uh, also keeps your foot warm, um, but I've had no blisters, no hot spots with this combo, so that's the one I'm going to stick with for this hunt. And then, like I said, late season uh, archery elk in Arizona. Uh, gators. So if you get any snow, late season weather, um, if you get a little bit of rain or in the morning, if the dew is, is heavy on the grass and the brush, you're going to end up with wet pant legs. Uh, this is my favorite gator. Uh, we sell this in the gear shop. So this is the Sea to Summit Quagmire Gator. Uh, it's got a couple of features that I actually like about that. Um, one of them is this little hook and loop. So a lot of gators, uh, the tops of them have a different claps uh, system at the top. The thing I like about this one is it's a little hook and loop. So it's gonna simply slide that in. I'm gonna take that and pull that in to cinch it around my calf. Uh, this one doesn't come undone for me like a lot of the other gators do. That clasp at the top is important to me. Uh, and it's probably the main reason why I like this gator, the Sea to Summit Quagmire. Uh, so it's event material, it is waterproof. The lower portion of that is a heavy duty Cordura, so you're not gonna get any wear uh, or tear if you're scraping your boots together. Um, I really like this little gator, Sea to Summit Quagmire. All right, moving over into my clothing. Uh, Colorado, you have to have a top and a hat. So this is the uh, Sitka uh, Ballistic Vest. 
What's nice about this vest, a couple of things actually. You got a couple of pockets, which I like for extra shells or any you know extra gear that you might need. If you need a hand warmer, you can pop it in there. Also has a little bit of padding in the shoulder, which is nice. Um, you know, when you're 15, you don't got a lot of meat on your bones, especially my kid. So that little added shoulder padding is a nice feature in this Sitka ballistic vest. The other thing I like about it is this little magnetic closure. It's really easy to use and it stays put, it doesn't open up. Um, I love this little vest. So once again, Sitka ballistic vest. So he'll be using just an orange beanie for a hat or the uh, flow orange go hunt trucker that we've got in the gear shop. Uh, moving into layers. So late season, mid season hunting is all about layers. Uh, you got to layer up you got to be able to shed those off if it's your hiking and hunting. Uh, and then putting those back on as you're sitting and glassing. One of my very favorite mid layers is the Sitka Kelvin light uh, jacket. So it's, it's not a down jacket, it's a synthetic and it's got just a, the right amount of insulation to keep you insulated and warm. Um, it dries extremely quickly so you can wet this thing out from sweat if you need to. And typically within a few hours of just wearing it, your body heat's gonna warm it up and dry it. Uh, I really like this little Sitka light jacket. Next layer, uh, a layer that I really like that's been a staple in my system for a long time is the Sitka uh, Core Heavyweight Hoodie. So it's got uh, kind of a raised fleece backing. You've got a quarter zip through the front to dump heat if you need it. You got a chest pocket. You have uh, thumb rings, which is really nice. Keep that thing on when you're adding layers on top of it. Uh, that's my one of my all-time favorite Sitka layers. If you're looking to buy a Sitka system and you're getting into it, I would suggest even from early September all the way through October, November, uh, and even December, if you're looking to go south to Arizona and hunt deer, uh, this little core heavyweight hoodie from Sitka is a piece of gear that you probably ought to have in your kit. Uh, base layer, Sitka core lightweight hoodie. Uh, I'm a fan of hoodies. I like them. You can keep the wind off your head and your neck. Uh, once again, quarter zip, nice lightweight, breathable, uh, dries extremely quick. For pants, you got a few options that I really like. Uh, so this is the Sitka Mountain Pant, which I think is a great mid to late season weight. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than their lightweight versions. Uh, the Ascent Pant, uh, also the Traverse Pant. This Mountain Pant is a really nice weight for mid season hunting. Uh, I like the pocket configuration and I also like the fit of this pant. It's a nice athletic tapered fit. Uh, it's not too roomy in the thighs or uh, the crotch, so you don't get that baggy MC hammer look that you might if you're a first light band. What, 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 what? Uh, so I like the fit of this pant. Uh, I really like the way these pants fit. Uh, something that I pulled out that you might want to take a look at um, are the knee pads, and you can add the knee pads. You can buy extra sets of these. Uh, on the Sitka site, but this is a just a knee pad that you can put inside a sleeve that works on the inside of those pants. Uh, some people don't like them, I love them. Um, for bending over, tying your shoe, for nailing to take a shot, uh, especially once that ground gets hard and frozen, it's really nice to have a little bit of added padding. The other thing about these is if you wear them for a few days, they actually kind of mold and fit form uh, to your knee. But they are really beneficial when you have to, like I said, you have to drop to your knees for a shot or tie your shoes or something in the morning. Uh, moving on to some of the gear to keep warm uh, during late season hunts. Uh, these are a must for me. So this is a Western Mountaineering flight pant. Uh, you can see I've probably got a little too close to a campfire at some point and I've got some pinholes in it. Uh, that I've patched up, but this uh, flight pant has a waterproof butt and uh, lower leg portion. Uh, tons of down in these things. They're less than a pound. I think they're about 11 or 12 ounces. Uh, and you can see how lofty those things are, but those things keep you warm. Uh, if you're doing long sessions and you're sitting in glassing uh, or at nighttime before you make camp, you can just pop those down pants on. Uh, those are handy. I would suggest that these are probably some of my favorite pieces of gear in my entire kit are these uh, Western Mountaineering down flight pants. Uh, for, for insulation up top, uh, I'm going to be using this Stone Glacier Grumman, Grumman uh, down hooded jacket. Uh, really lightweight, less than a pound, warm. Uh, I really like this jacket. I've been using it for a couple years. It's been really good to me. Uh, and I do really like the, uh, the overall weight and the specs on this. Another couple of options you could look at, uh, I haven't had a chance to use them, but I hear great things would be the Sitka Kelvin Light Down Hoodie. Um, Brady has one of those and just absolutely loves it, as well as the three-quarter length down pants. So that would be an excellent option to check out. 
if it's going to be a little bit colder and you got some high winds, uh, you might also check out that sick uh, uh, Kelvin WS, which is a wind stopper. It's got a wind stopper layer built within that thing. Uh, I have one of those and I've used it on some late season, like November, December type stuff, and it's been really, really good. A couple other pieces of gear uh, that I would highly suggest. So I've got a pair of down mittens here. This is a pair of down mittens from Outdoor Research. Uh, Sitka also has uh, a down mitten, the Blizzard down mitten, uh, which is handy. It's got an inner glove. Um, those are probably a little bit heavier and heavier duty than what I need for this hunt. So like I said, this little pair of OR Outdoor Research down mittens uh, will be going with me. I typically do pack like another set of gloves. So this is the Sitka Traverse glove, which is just a soft shell type glove. Uh, I can wear that uh, during the day or, or even in the mornings uh, if I need a little dexterity when I'm getting my stuff together. A lot of the times if I'm sitting in glassing, uh, I will put this on and then put that inside a down mitten just to give me some added warmth. Um, I may also just pack like a simple pair of leather uh, palm gloves to give me some more dexterity uh, on working on an animal if it's really cold. So I typically have a pair of those either with me or in the truck. I have one more jacket. Uh, I've been checking the, uh, the weather report and it doesn't look like we're gonna have a lot of rain or snow. Uh, I will probably throw this in my pack uh, even though it's Probably not the best use case scenario for it, but this is the Sitka Vapor SD jacket, which is just a safe shake dry, uh, single layer Gore-Tex jacket. You can shake that thing off and ditch any uh, weather, uh, any kind of rain or snow that would build up on it. Um, it's super lightweight, it's like six ounces, so it fits in your pack, you hardly notice it's there. Um, it's probably not best use for this type of hunt. I mean, you get into later season hunts, you're, you're gonna want a more, um, you know, a beefy, heavy duty hard shell like the Cloud Burst. You may even want something like the Storm Front, depending on the type of hunt you're doing. If you're on horseback and you're really hunting late season, that Storm Front jacket is really tough to beat. Uh, but this is probably gonna get me by for this hunt. Um, you know, if I look at that late season hunt into Arizona where I have a lot of brush, uh, that storm front jacket might be the go-to depending on what the weather looks like. Uh, so that's my waterproof layer. Uh, and like I said, I also have that Bavana rack. If I really get into a storm, I can throw that over the top of me and my pack. Uh, one piece of gear that I failed to bring and I'm so bummed out because it's one of my very favorite pieces for mid to late season hunts. And maybe, you know, our guys can put some graphics on the screen and show you what that looks like. But I love a pair of down booties. So there's a couple of companies that make them that I would suggest you take a look at. One of them being Western Mountaineering. They make a really nice down booty um, that's about calf height. Uh, the ones that I have are from a company called Sierra Designs. What that is, is it's just a simply like what it said, it's a down booty that goes over your feet. Uh, what I've done with those is uh, I carry them with me in my pack. Um, if I do a lot of hiking during the day, like I said, my feet sweat a lot. And then if I sit down, my feet get cold. So typically what I do, if I'm going to be sitting and glassing for a couple hours, I'll peel my boots off and I'll actually put those down booties on. They've got a little bit of a sole on them. Um, they're down, like I said, about calf height. Those keep my feet warm. I've never had any issues with my feet getting really, really cold once I started using those down booties. Um, for you guys that are whitetail hunters, those are money in the tree stand. You know, you simply take your boots off, hang them over a limb, put those down booties on, and probably be the warmest part of your whole body. I know that at least from my experience, those were key for, for November whitetail honey uh, in the Midwest. A uh, couple final pieces of gear that I'm gonna to touch on. This will be it for me. Uh, gun, so the gun that my boy's gonna use on this hunt that we're going on is a Browning Hills Canyon long range in a 28 nozzler. Uh, 28 nozzle has just been an awesome caliber and I cannot tell you how impressive this gun has been for me. Uh, the thing just shoots lights out. So Browning Hills Canyon long range. So for a scope uh, on this gun, I've got a Leupold VX uh, 3 LRP scope on it. This thing has been really good. Um, I don't rifle hunt a ton, but as far as like ease of use and setting it up and sighting it in and just reliability and accuracy, uh, this combo, this little uh, Leupold VX3 LRP and then the Browning 28 Nosler, the Hell's Canyon Long Range has just been a phenomenal couple. That's the gun we're going to use. Um, you know, he's been putting some rounds through it and feels confident, so I think it's going to do great. I do have a bipod on this in the front. Uh, that's just a simple Harris bipod in a 9 by 13 inch extension. 
Um, it's been great. He feels really confident in using that. He's had a lot of experience in being able to get those legs kicked out and he knows how they work uh, and he'll be ready to go. Um, the last piece of gear I'm going to touch on uh, is my pack. So this is a Stone Glacier X-Curve frame uh, and this is a 7400 bag which unfortunately they do not make anymore. Uh, this is my favorite uh, pack setup. Uh, I would say if you're looking for something comparable, you could look at the Sky 6400. You could also look at the 6900, which is nice because you got a couple of added pockets on either side. Uh, the thing I like about this pack, uh, I like that it's got a center zip. It makes it really easy to get into the bag. It also has the top load, which is great. You can load it from the top. Um, I like the overall size of this bag and I don't have to use it with a top lid and I can still get like six to maybe even eight days out of this pack. It's big enough I can do that. Um, it's been my favorite pack setup from them, uh, and I don't know, maybe they'll bring something in that, that range back in the future, I don't know, we'll see, but it's been my favorite. So that's the uh, 7400 with the X-Curve frame, um, right around 5 pounds, and we're hoping to pack an elk out in that thing this next week. Uh, once again, this is my mid, I would say, to late season uh, hunt gear list. Getting ready to go on Thursday with my 15 year old Landon. He is super excited. Uh, I think this might be the one hunt uh, that has just absolutely blown my level of excitement out of the water. I'm so pumped to be able to take my kid on his first uh, bull elk hunt. Uh, if you guys have questions about any of these gear, or any of these individual pieces, you know, drop those comments below. We'd love it if you would like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, good luck to you guys that still have tags in your pocket. There's still a lot of hunting to be done. Good luck to you.